Today is the 10th lecture from the Dao Dota series, and it is dedicated to analyzing different strategic cases and the logic of making crucial strategic decisions that have had a significant impact on the development and growth of our business over the years. In general, I can confidently say that the ongoing success of our company is the direct result of a series of important key strategic decisions that have been carefully made and implemented. However, the correct strategy is only 50% of the battle as you require to execute an idea, a strategy. And strategy, since it is such a lengthy plan, should not be deviated from during implementation. And the implementation of the strategy can be no less complex than finding an idea for the strategy. What do you require for the implementation of strategy in general? Look, you require a multitude of things, but without these necessities, without taking a leap of faith, when you need to believe in the idea, convince yourself that this long-term plan will work and without maintaining some discipline in executing the strategy, there can be no successful implementation of the speech. What is discipline in strategy implementation? When we have a clear direction, we are confident. And then we have enough willpower not to deviate because there will always be many temptations. And today I will talk about it using specific cases as examples. So buddies, the key strategic cases that I have selected to analyze from our history are the ones I am focusing on for my analysis. I would like to remind you about the methodology. I was specifically talking in the previous lecture about how I developed effective strategies in my mind, which proved to be crucial for achieving my goals. What elements tried to identify some pattern of thinking? This is my subjective picture and like any template, it is a convention. But it appears to me in general that such a logical process was in my mind when I was contemplating how to attain specific objectives by taking part in the formulation of strategies. I would like to remind you that a strategy is a specific plan that is implemented in order to achieve a particular goal. Uh, we need to clearly define the goal. We need to understand how the future will change because the goal is located in the future. If this is a long-term strategy, then it represents a long-term future. And in order to proceed, you need to determine what the key point is. The main point is the most crucial thing that will bring the highest possible outcomes. This is similar to the Pareto principle in which frequently 20% of the factors are responsible for 80% of the outcome. The key point is a silver bullet, the main point of application of efforts, a lever that will allow to achieve a great result. You need to understand the strengths in a specific context, in a specific situation, what you need to rely on and understand, clearly define the limitations, see them because the strategy must take them into account. Everything is interconnected. And based on this, utilizing creativity, a strategy is formulated. So let's initiate with a case such as traveling to Moscow. I would attempt to deconstruct each case using this methodology. Objective. What was our objective when our company set itself the task? Of course, the objective was to achieve success in the Moscow market. What is the definition of success in the Moscow market? The definition of success in the Moscow market is that every pizzeria in Moscow is achieving success. We are starting to form the unit economy of a specific pizzeria. What do you need for this? What is the key point? Where should I aim? This is the so-called representation. Our objective is to cover the entire city with our pizzerias. We have successfully implanted in the consumer's mind the belief that establishing a brand will result in a higher average revenue per pizzeria. In general, we produce a commodity item that is a product that is extremely simple to replicate. However, the companies that possess a brand do not require continuous financial investment in order to acquire customers. Clients arrive, guests arrive because they are aware of the brand, they have trust in it. This is accomplished through both representation and stability and quality. When individuals comprehend where they are going, they will gain the expected experience and it will be good. 
What limitations did we have? We did not possess the funds to rapidly encompass the entire city. What does this mean? Yes, that is, there are different cases of going to major cities. If the company was able to attract a large amount of capital, it can aggressively develop in the city, open a large number of pizzerias with its own money. But for this, you need this long capital. We did not possess such capital. This is our most significant limitation. However, we had strong aspects. This is a substantial number of partners, enthusiasts with an extraordinary amount of energy. Through the combination of all this, a strategy emerged, which I referred to as the ring operation. It consisted in the fact that we do not go to Moscow. We wait and close all of Moscow region with our pizzerias, open points in every city of Moscow region in order to create such bases from which our partners who want to go to Moscow in the future will go to Moscow. Then when we surrounded Moscow with pizzerias, we divided, we waited until they strengthened. When teams appeared after that, we divided Moscow into sectors. We already held tenders among partners for sectors and a large number of prepared partners with teams went to Moscow and the Moscow region at the same time. They could take from there, learn there, and at the same time, close the city. This allowed us to quickly create representation, quickly close the city and quickly start building the brand. The strategy of surrounding Moscow with pizzerias proved successful as it enabled us to establish a strong presence in the market and expand our brand rapidly. This specific strategy has consistently yielded successful outcomes, making it a highly effective approach for our organization. The second case, the most important in our history, is the refusal to work with aggregators in our largest market in Russia. In 2009, the Delivery Club aggregator emerged in Russia. There were many of them, but Delivery Club proved to be the startup that would grow into a large aggregator and receive the most money. And in general, there are modifications and adjustments happening in the market at this particular time. Big aggregators are emerging in America that are setting the tone and shaping the landscape for the venture industry as a whole. And in fact, aggregators in all industries are starting to grow very aggressively. These are both hotels and taxis, and they go to catering. However, on January 18th, 2017, I received a letter from Kirillov Ripaev, our recently hired financial director, in which he presented his arguments that we should permanently stop working with aggregators. Kirillov, who joined our company just a few weeks ago, outlined the reasons behind his recommendation to discontinue our collaboration with aggregators on a permanent basis. Because for us, it is a type of trap that he will transform into strategic dependence and in general, expose our business to significant strategic risks and vulnerabilities. In point of fact, this was precisely the subject matter that I was discussing in the preceding lecture that took place earlier. Thought, vision of where the puck will be, how the market will change, what will happen in the future. Because in the moment, it seems very profitable to work with an aggregator because it brings customers. In the future, the aggregator won't allow brand creation as it commoditizes products, hindering the opportunity to build a unique brand identity. The term commodity, when all the products that are included in the aggregator, they are considered equivalent as a whole entity or collective. We allocate the margin to our primary business in delivery aggregators. And this margin is subtracted from our partners, from our business, and we are unable to invest it in creating a brand that will stay with us, which is our most important advantage and a key factor for long-term success. Actually, after receiving a letter from Kirill talking to him, I thought deeply and came to the conclusion that we have a chance to fight against aggregators in general. Why did not other individuals perceive it? The reason is that in our particular line of work, the brand holds such a significant and indispensable position. In relation to their distinctiveness, businesses may vary, but when considering similarities, all businesses have shared characteristics. But under no circumstances can we compare for example, aggregators winning in the taxi market, we can automatically transfer to the restaurant market and say that there is exactly the same situation, but in fact, businesses are very different. And in our business, in catering, the product and brand of McDonald's play a crucial role 
in the consumer's decision to order for delivery. When a consumer chooses McDonald's, they do so because they have confidence in the company's commitment to ensuring quality stability. Additionally, they are drawn to the familiar taste and have a strong sense of loyalty to the McDonald's brand. In the event that McDonald's decides to withdraw from the aggregator, the customer will choose the brand, specifically McDonald's, because the products offered by McDonald's, Dodo Pizza and Burger King are unique and cannot be easily substituted or replaced. Undoubtedly, there are a plethora of burgers available in the market, but the system of business organization, culture, and quality stability play a crucial role in making the products of those companies that have the opportunity to create a brand truly unique and stand out from the competition. And in fact, we realized that creating a brand would not be possible due to the aggregators restrictions. So our only chance in the competition with aggregators is to find a way around it and create a brand despite the obstacles. And in general, we are not afraid. Uh, we comprehend that there will be a brand. So we will have the capacity to compete with aggregators uh, being an independent brand. What restrictions did we have? Look, in general, aggregators are usually owned by companies that have a cost-effective monopolistic source of internet traffic at their disposal, giving them a competitive advantage in the market. These are search engines, large-scale internet holdings that play a significant role in online information retrieval. Engaging in competition with them in the digital realm is virtually impossible due to the fact that their budgets will always be larger in size. We with a single product with an independent brand cannot compete for traffic, so to speak, for our visibility on the internet on equal terms. This is our limitation, our strengths. Unlike aggregators, we have a physical brand presence at that moment we realized our pizzerias would grow in number and our brand presence would increase significantly. We have full control over the entire value creation chain, which enables us to guarantee quality from the moment an order is placed to the moment of delivery. We have a multitude of strong partners who can ensure operational excellence. That is, if the aggregator is unable to directly influence the quality of work of all its partners, then we have a larger number of these influence tools and we can provide better operational quality on average than the partners of the aggregator, resulting in a higher level of overall excellence. Uh, and all this led to a confident rejection of the dark kitchen concept, uh, which was very popular at the time. Many people in the market were saying, why open restaurants when you can only work on delivery? But we understood that if we don't have physically noticeable restaurants in the physical world, then our key advantage, our unique advantage over aggregators, that is this presence in the physical world, we will remove it ourselves. Thus, we've decided to fully abandon dark kitchen concept, making a fundamental decision for ourselves. On the 26th of January, you see, we had sufficient time for a whole week of reflection and contemplation. I officially announced that we are permanently discontinuing our work with aggregators in Russia. Following that, on multiple occasions at different levels, aggregators, internet companies extended offers of exclusive cooperation conditions to us, but we consistently declined them in Russia. In the year 2017, our company was predicted to face bankruptcy and ruin due to our decision to go against the prevailing market trends and strategies. However, this leap of faith was necessary in order to persuade our partners. At times, we have not had a significant reliance on aggregators yet, but for partners, it has been a very pleasant experience. As aggregators gave new partners clients, it was necessary to believe, ensure correct execution, and have faith in our actions. For some reason, I am showing this picture of Vera's jump. You know, in the movies you watch, a person runs, he calculated everything, he is sure that he should make it. And he began running and ran up to the very edge. And in that moment, when he ran up to the very edge, he suddenly hesitated. What will happen? He probably won't make it. Therefore, if we have adopted a strategy, we need to act, we need to jump. Otherwise, it will only get worse if we start doubting the process. So our strategy turned out to be successful. You observe the events that occurred two to three years subsequent to declining aggregators. We stayed as the sole independent player 
the third one in the market with a substantial share, and our share was experiencing growth. We kept growing and overall this choice to ditch aggregators has given us very significant benefits in the future in Russia. When the pandemic struck, we were likely the only significant independent company that did not rely on the quality or economy of aggregators for our business operations. We could determine the terms of working with clients ourselves. We were responsible for our own quality and all this allowed us to grow and we grew very strongly during the same pandemic. Please inform me of your thoughts regarding this matter. What's next, friends? I believe that strategically, we have no other choice but to gradually abandon aggregators in the future. Since our business revolves around delivery, it constitutes a significant portion of our operations. Digital experience is an integral part of the delivery process. Plus, we must have full control over our client base, the entire value creation chain in our business. Hence, from a strategic standpoint, I firmly believe that we must transition away from aggregators. Um, it won't be easy to do, so we need the discipline of strategy, understanding where we are going, and very disciplined, consistently implementing this strategy. How? by generating clear and tangible value for our customers when they place direct orders with us, value that they will not receive or experience when using aggregators. We discussed it extensively. We have full control over the entire chain, enabling us to develop digital solutions that are seamlessly integrated into production and service, thereby delivering added value to our customers. Aggregators can't do this as they lack control over independent partners at the level we achieve in our integrated business. I will provide an example. This is the approach that Apple takes in the creation of their products, ensuring integration between hardware and software components. This provides the ideal and flawless combination that is truly perfect in every way. This provides an extraordinary and unparalleled experience for users. Android has a distinct and unique strategy allowing you to install Android software on any hardware device of your choice. Certainly, this gives a distinct experience, so Apple has advantages. Both models work. I'm not saying one is worse, the other is better. So we surely have an opportunity here. And apart from that, apart from the need to generate value for the client, we must establish representation, that is, a brand. So we can't leave the aggregators when we have only one pizzeria. Therefore, this process should be gradual, and in each market, we need to choose a market focus. Focus in order to create representation, a brand, after which steps should be taken towards creating independent delivery. Next case, I wanted to discuss creation of National Marketing Fund. In my opinion, this is a crucial moment. In 2014, 2015, uh, we began to understand that we are growing, we are close. Our growth cannot be stopped anymore. The number of pizzerias is increasing. There is a powerful traction, but at the same time, I understood that our team understood that overall, we do not have any unique competitive advantage yet. And we had to build an ROV. Our ROV and our company is a brand. Now I'll explain what it is. Generally, the concept of an economic gap, I do not know if it was invented or not, but Warren Buffett, a renowned investor, discussed it during his speeches and interviews. In actuality, ROV is a business advantage that is exceedingly difficult to replicate. As a matter of fact, in our specific industry, the act of copying everything is not inherently that challenging. You have the ability to replicate McDonald's, you have the ability to replicate Dodo, what is the driving force in our business? Just this brand. This is an intangible asset. Value, this accumulated reputation, which brings guests back to us, enabling us to reduce expenses on attracting guests, customers, as the brand itself starts attracting them, thereby allowing us to save on guest acquisition costs and attract customers more efficiently. And it cannot be copied, and it protects the business. That's why Buffett calls it room advantage. What safeguards the business? And we realized we had to create this ROV, we had to create this brand, but how to do it? 
The key point in this case is the volume of investment in advertising. We built a network, we increased the number of points, and each point had its own local marketing. However, in order to establish a nationwide brand, it is imperative to make investments in advertising on a national scale. And in fact, whoever starts investing more, whoever has this opportunity, will be the first to create a brand, and it will be very difficult to compete with this company further. Everyone will be in the position of followers because the bigger your brand is, the more sales you have, the more you can invest in advertising. And if you can invest more in advertising, you can attract more customers. They give you higher revenues. You can invest more in advertising again. And it transpires that it is remarkably smooth and seamless when our business is exceedingly well protected and safeguarded from any potential threats or vulnerabilities that may arise. At that moment, we realized it was time to create the trench, which was strategically vital. However, we had a limitation. We didn't immediately include the point about allocating a certain percentage of revenue to the National Advertising Fund, which is necessary. In general, this is a typical condition of all franchise agreements in Western regions when they are initially signed. However, when we established our franchise, we realized that there is currently no funding, no strong product, no solid concept, and everything is still in progress. And right away, inform the partners that you will still pay for marketing. We were scared. Maybe we ourselves didn't believe in it yet, but we had to change it somehow now. What were the strengths to change it? There was a culture, a partnership culture, open, when there was very good communication between us and our partners. We can have discussions not only on positive aspects, but also on negative aspects. We can honestly talk and have discussions on long-term matters. And we initiated the company in order to create an advertising fund for our business endeavors. He was crucial to us. What did we decide? We decided to carry out the initial federal ad campaign with our own funds to demonstrate the outcomes to our partners, to market, because partners require more than one vision. Our plan was to collect 3% of the revenue as our share. In fact, by world standards, this is quite a small amount. But even such money to include the contract, we needed to convince partners because in not our culture, not in our rules to do something directly, thereby destroying our partnership relations. And here we initiated the initial ad campaign. Someone recollected. We made an investment of 60 million rubles, taking into account the prevailing exchange rates at the present time. These appear to be absolutely humorous funds, but this company has consistently delivered truly outstanding and impressive results. And these results? These findings have become a significant factor in altering attitudes towards the establishment of the National Advertising Fund. After that, we had a relatively sizable company. We negotiated with all of the largest partners and ultimately conducted a vote and emerged as the victors, establishing an advertising fund. In actuality, the advertising fund provided our brand with a powerful strategic advantage. And as a result, I believe we have successfully created a highly robust brand in the Russian market. We have dug a trench and will continue to invest in our brand, ensuring that this process remains perpetual and never ending. In fact, we have established a long-term competitive advantage in Russia. The subsequent case that I would like to discuss and the solution is the introduction of new concepts. In general, up until 2019, I was distinguished by my consistent emphasis on the importance of focus. And when someone asked us, partners Fedor, if we can launch additional franchises because we did it so cool with pizza, so qualitatively, with such a detailed approach, I consistently said no. On November 1st, 2019, we make an announcement regarding the launch of two new concepts, coffee and donor, which go beyond our traditional focus on pizza. Why did we decide to defocus? What happened to me? Why did I make such a decision? Why did the team make such a decision? Now I am going to tell you about my logic, explaining how this decision was made. 
look, we created a technology company, more specifically a food tech company, right from the very beginning of our journey. But ultimately, at a certain juncture, I came to the realization that we are already nearing, we did not come close to and still have not come close to certain limits of the pizza market in Russia. However, we have already witnessed in a distant location the boundaries regarding the reality that this market is comparatively small in relation to the magnitude of the global consumer business market. As a company planning to invest from our own funds in development, we realized that the resources and profits we would receive in the pizza market in Russia and neighboring countries were insufficient to invest in technologies and compete with the largest food giants. These giants are typically subsidiaries of large companies and play a significant role in global development. Therefore, we understood the need to find additional sources of funding to support our ambitions and stay competitive in the market. So we comprehended that we required to persist in investing in technologies in order to evolve in international markets. Not enough pizza market. The question is not about investments as investors care about our future direction. And Let's say if we started in America and the American market, it is X times bigger than the Russian one. It's a huge market. And as a rule, all American companies in our segment, well, not only they achieve incredible success in America, create a large billion dollar business, which allows them to invest in technologies. And then they go global while the American market is always the biggest for them. We comprehended that our market would not suffice as we are solely present in one segment. Subsequently, with the aim of minimizing, I observed a goal that necessitates diminishing long-term risks, competing with colossal foot giants, and thus expanding the boundaries of our business. In general, the idea of going beyond pizza probably originated not because we have already reached certain limits, no, we simply realize that there is a horizon in the future and in order for us to compete and develop, we need to expand our market presence in order to stay competitive and continue to grow. What were the restrictions actually? This is a lack of competence outside of pizza and a lack of competence outside of network catering. And the key point I remind you once more is that lever, the main point of application of efforts, which determines the entire outcome and is crucial for achieving the desired result. In our business, it is the creation of some strong business model at the unit economics level. In the previous lecture, I discussed how the catering industry enables the development of innovative models in Sektivkar, which can subsequently be duplicated or reproduced. The primary aspect is that it should contain something within that is more efficient and innovative in comparison to other similar options available in the market. In fact, this is the crucial point. What are our strengths? In the process of developing Dodo, we have actually acquired the ability to effectively combine three distinct competencies. This, competencies. In general, when it comes to developing a retail concept, it is crucial to have the ability to work with entrepreneurs, develop entrepreneurs, find cool entrepreneurs, motivate them, and build very long-term partnership relationships for sustainable success. These are, of course, technologies. And here at the junction, this junction, the triangle, is our main strong side of Dodo Brands. In reality, taking into account all of this information, the decision was ultimately made to proceed with new concepts as the preferred course of action. We continue to develop them. Will this strategy ultimately be successful? Can we become more than pizza? As of now, the company's profit is solely from pizza, so we will have to wait a few years to find out more about it. However, I firmly believe that we made the right decision and the outcome that we have now in Drinkity is a testament to our unwavering confidence and unwavering optimism. The progress we have achieved is truly remarkable and serves as a constant reminder of the positive impact we can make. I am incredibly proud of what we have accomplished. At the same time, as I have already mentioned, I do not completely dismiss our third concept. Wait, there will soon be a release of something brand new. I am confident that a lot of people will be pleasantly surprised. Friends, at this moment, I would like to discuss briefly the strategy of the future.
Actually, this is not even a future strategy. It is a present strategy. What are we doing now? I have encountered such opinions often lately in the past year. I heard that not everyone comprehends our strategy, although I believed I talked about it extensively throughout the current year, 2023. But I want to briefly tell you about her again and again in the logic of the method I have chosen. So on February 24th, our world underwent a significant change. The context shifted and we found ourselves needing to reconstruct all of our long-term plans. Hence, the aim of the new strategy must be clearly defined to sustain global growth, regardless of obstacles. After the incidents on February 24th, we had the chance to change our global long-term goal, but we opted not to make any modifications. And this is the objective of our existing strategy. In spite of all challenges, construct our ambitious vision, construct a worldwide enterprise. What is the primary factor that must be emphasized to successfully achieve this goal? Uh, you need to have an attractive product model because we are engaged in replication, scaling of some competitive working model. We need to possess a more efficient, more appealing business model in comparison to our competitors. And we need to possess a substantial case. Look, this model works. Who are we showing this to? The partners, investors, including myself, going to some other markets independently. What kind of restrictions are you referring to? At the present time, Russia is no longer a viable case for our potential partners to consider. Yes, we have a thriving business in Russia. Currently, our accomplishments are not being disregarded by our international partners. Our strengths for strategy implementation a strong foundation with the powerful Dodo is system we've created gives us a competitive advantage. We have achieved a great deal. And on this foundation, remarkable things can be built in the future. We possess a system as a whole. Our business system initiates, provides assistance to, and oversees the concept. And we possess a robust, impressive team, a large team. In fact, what is our strategy to accomplish our objective of worldwide expansion, regardless of any obstacles? She is extremely uncomplicated. We need to establish a demonstration in Dubai. That is to say, to attain confident leadership, strive for success in this market through qualitative growth. I, I, our goal, success in Dubai, improving quality in all we do, our brand, customer experience, product, and digital. Enhancing is key to achieving success in the Dubai market. Both qualitative expansion and a demonstration in Dubai are expected to result in additional worldwide growth. Due to its small size and significant global market presence, Dubai serves as a crucial hub for conducting business transactions from around the world. But this is the first part of our global strategy. It concerns both Dodo, Drinkit, and our entire business. Dubai serves as a window, providing a glimpse into the next step in the global market and its potential for growth and innovation. The question is how to succeed in Dubai with a local strategy. Dubai is competitive. Here you can find all the world's not only pizza brands, but also a variety of other international chains. Let's break down this strategy that we currently have in Dubai into these elements that I proposed. What's the goal? To lead Dubai's delivery market, we set a very ambitious goal. What's the key point? She's the same as in Moscow. We must create a strong brand for this, achieved through presence and operational excellence. That is, operational excellence provides quality stability. The stability of quality provides the return of our guests confidence in the experience, establishes the brand. Why is branding important? I'll repeat important things again. The brand creates ROV, enabling to attract customers more efficiently and at a lower cost, retain customers. And in the bloody competitive market with enormous competition, this is extremely important. If you don't have a brand, you are consistently losing customers. You need to consistently invest money in attracting customers. 
It burns your profit, your resources. In the end, you gradually drop out of the market. What are our restrictions? Friends, this market is already occupied. He's much busier. What is the market of Moscow when we were going to Moscow? Currently, we are facing objective challenges with financing. It is not just because our company is profitable and has resources, but investing aggressively in the development of Dubai from Russia today is quite difficult. Our financial resources are constrained by our income from abroad. Consequently, we have certain limitations. We cannot go to Dubai and splash money. We also need to come up with some clever strategy. And our strengths are derived from the invaluable support of our partners with whom we have cultivated and nurtured truly constructive, effective, and mutually beneficial partnership relations. Flexibility and creativity of our company. We can devise strategies. So we created a plan to achieve goal to be leaders in Dubai. We have mobilized the power of the community. We have divided Dubai into sectors, into nine sectors. By the way, the slide is all, we divided it into seven sectors to represent various aspects of the topic we are discussing. I truly do not know for certain, but it is not particularly crucial for the strategy at this moment in time. We split into multiple sectors. We offered the following to our partners. We said that we are making this market preferential for 10 years, making the interest rate 0%. You know, Dubai is famous for its low taxes to attract capital. We decided to attract strong partners and create competition for the opportunity to go to Dubai so we can choose the best one. And uh, our strategy is to assemble the strongest team, the strongest partners with uh, resources, teams, and together with us, quickly start opening pizzerias in Dubai in order to create a presence that will begin to create a brand. We will commence investing in citywide advertising because we will have coverage. This will enable us to swiftly create brand awareness, thereby facilitating the achievement of success in a timely manner. However, that is not all. We made the conscious decision to include an extra creative element to further enhance the effectiveness of this strategy. We decided to create a children's pizza academy. Uh, how did this idea come about? I asked myself a question, can we attract attention to the brand on the mass market, not in a premium restaurant, when we don't have a large network yet? Because when pizzerias of our format open, it is not an incredible event that people will see and remember in the mass market in a big city, because the competition is high and people's attention is scattered. That's why we made a kid's pizza academy. A unique place, not a pizzeria, but an entertainment center for children to learn and have fun. Who will conduct non-stop masterclasses for children in a professional and qualitative manner, ensuring high quality and expertise. Dubai is a city of kids with many children and lots of entertainment. Our plan is to invite families and classes from the whole city so children can learn about the brand while having fun, cooking pizza and experiencing joy. However, they will leave with brand awareness, with emotions, and our objective is for the maximum number of kids to go through the Children's Pizza Academy. And when these children, families return to the neighborhood, at some point they see uh, Dudu Pizza opening, they remember they know. In the modern world, it's hard to reach the heart of the consumer, and the Academy for Children should simply become very precious to the hearts of the inhabitants of Dubai Dubai, here is our clever and cunning strategy for successfully entering the Dubai market, which is an integral part of our comprehensive global strategy for expansion and growth. Now, buddies, you can start contemplating the questions. I would like to discuss a crucial aspect in long-term strategies, such as the concept of burning bridges and its impact on future outcomes. Look, in the year 2011, I made the decision that we would create our own information technology system. We would develop Dodo IS. In general, it was a highly risky and very long-term undertaking. Enterprise lengthy project in spring 2011, in June, we initiated the initial Dodo IS block. Uh, you see, this is the initial Dodo is interface ever created. 
It signifies a groundbreaking innovation that revolutionized the way we interact with information systems, marking a significant milestone in technology history. Its impact is immeasurable to accept orders by phone. Initially, we took orders for such papers. It is a prototype of an information system. There, it was necessary to put a check mark that the guest ordered. Then this paper went to the kitchen. Then it went to the courier, actually. And the courier took the first order with such a paper. And here we are in June. More precisely, I think it wasn't in June, it was autumn. In June, we started developing. In autumn, we launched. In the fall of 2011, we initiated the initial interface. And, you know, I told myself at that time that we would never, not even for one day, collaborate on any alternative system. And uh, there were a substantial number of temptations because when you develop a system for a working business that at some point starts growing very rapidly, you always have a temptation in that particular moment for short-term results to go for some working solutions without feeling the pain involved. Nevertheless, by opting for this course of action, you are not burning any bridges, but instead you are gradually moving away from this complex long-term strategy of creating and implementing your own system. I expressed that we will endure difficulties. Our system will persist in being primitive and inconvenient for a prolonged period of time. Nevertheless, we will solely engage with it and make it work. And the fact that we collaborate with her will enable us to do it in an increasingly superior manner. And you see this strategy worked. We have overcome many difficulties and our system is getting better and better. And I am confident that there will come a point in time when it will simply be an extremely cool product in the field of information technology. Actually, another instance of burning bridges, implementation of such a long-term plan. I will provide a mini example from the life of Drinkita. You know, our big visionary goal is to change the coffee shop experience and make it unique, creating a lasting impact on customers. We desire 100% of orders to be digital, and we have a strong belief that this will unlock a brand new and marvelous world for the guest and also generate a fresh value. And what we will do in the future, individuals cannot even compare in the future with what currently exists because the level of convenience, which individuals do not even contemplate at present, will be unimaginable through the experience of a comprehensive digital and offline approach. It will be an astonishing and unparalleled comparison that exceeds anything people can currently envision. However, we must come to this. And without such a radical approach, this cannot be accomplished. I will give you an example of when we opened a coffee shop on Poklanaya. What did we do? Are you able to see this red square? This is a showcase with products. We have removed it from the display. In fact, it seems that way, but it's really scary because we essentially fried our brains, which is extremely alarming. We mentioned that our products would only be visible to our guests within the application. And as a result, partners asked to leave showcases often not perfect yet, not perfect yet. Roughness, something is not functioning properly. Let's postpone the showcase until you achieve perfection. But what? We said no, because if we leave the showcase, we will have no incentive, no pain to constantly improve the application. However, this approach will make our application extremely cool completely replacing the showcase. This will enable us to effectively implement our big vision and achieve our goals. Friends I have, thank you, that's all.